Much like the upstairs master bedroom, we knew that this landing and bathroom area were going to be a complete gut job. Teenage vandals had punched holes in the walls, they had set fires on the floors, and over time, the cast iron fixtures in the bathroom fell victim to the hard water and rust. So much so that even though we scrubbed and cleaned, the mineral deposits had etched into the finish. The only way to actually utilize this tub was to stand in it while pouring water over our heads with a big cup. And that was not an easy task with those slanted roof lines. And as you would stand in the water, beetles would crawl out of the walls and fall down into the tub and would bite you. The only other option that we had at the time was this shower stall in the basement. It drained into a tile that would go out into the farm fields. And it worked effectively, but when we would have a lot of rain and the fields would flood, water would come back up through the pipe and flood the floor around the shower. These were two options that just did not set well with me, although this is what we lived with for a year and a half during our renovation. When we first moved in, there was no toilet in this bathroom. The prior owner told us that a special toilet had to be ordered because of the depth from the hole in the floor to the wall. That explains the hole in the wall that allowed for the tank of the prior toilet to fit. Once we moved in, we were able to get that toilet installed, so at least we had something covering the hole in the floor. I told my son and my nephew early on I had to have something other than just standing in a bathtub, pouring water over myself, or the option of the shower stall down in the basement, so I asked them to arm themselves with the sledgehammers and get to work at demoing this space. And they sure did enjoy it. They knocked everything down, leaving that one wall structure to protect the plumbing from the old sink. We would later utilize that for the new sink as well as a new shower install. What a mess they made. It seemed like every time I would clean up a mess, we would rip something else apart and make another mess. The bathroom only took 25% of this entire area. It made no sense to me that we had such a large landing, but such a small bathroom. And here's my son, he's such a jokester. I don't know how many pictures I have of him in big box stores or model homes or even during renovations, perfectly perched up on a toilet. He's such a jokester. We pulled the old cast iron tub out. We knew we weren't going to be able to reglaze it. So we opted instead to put a shower stall in this bathroom. This was too heavy to carry down the narrow, farmhouse stairs and we didn't have a window big enough to put it out so we ended up having to break it apart and carry it down heavy piece by heavy piece. The faucets for the bathtub that leaked over the years and caused all of the terrible staining were still dripping and dripped down into the ceiling for the floor below so we did have to come up with a solution to catch that water until we could cut the water off to that wall. We left these built-ins. They were built well. We knew it would be wonderful storage. We chose to bring the footprint of the bathroom down to just where the pitch roof starts. This allows for us to double the size of the bathroom space and allow for a hallway just alongside those built-ins. We ran some wirings. We have lighting. It's a perfect storage place now. We ripped out the old floor to gain access to the plumbing. And just be careful if you decide to do this, Walking on Joyce isn't as easy as one would think. We have evidence of that as our son almost went through into the room below. But we replaced the plumbing, we updated it, we had everything we needed in place to put down a new subfloor and start framing in for the new shower. We put in a four foot shower stall and it's just opposite of that big beautiful window so we get all of the natural light into the bathroom now. All new wiring, all new plumbing. We went with PEX, and I'm afraid I didn't get any pictures of that, but on the opposite side of this picture here, you would see all of the PEX that runs up for the hot and cold water, not only for the sink, but for the shower. I wasn't able to document a lot of the drywall going up. Keep in mind, this is shortly after my chemotherapy treatment, so I was down for the count sometimes. But my husband, our family friend, and our son continued on with getting the drywall up, getting all of the taping and the seams done, and before long, I was able to put up some paint. I went with the beautiful buttercream gold that I had used in the master bedroom. We also were able to put in new laminate flooring. 
The only thing that remained original to the bathroom was this built-in and the two windows that are original to the house. And we chose a beautiful pedestal sink. It is so much nicer than that old gas station style sink that we had in here before. I found this vintage inspired medicine cabinet on Marketplace and I thought it really tied in nicely to the bathroom. One thing I liked about that vintage inspired medicine cabinet is it had little shelves on the side to hold my collection of old bars of soap and my husband's collection of shaving mugs, razors, and brushes. We also chose all of our light fixtures with the globes pointing down so that they would not collect any insects or dust. I chose a color palette of this beautiful aqua, some grays, browns, and whites to play against the beautiful buttercream yellow. Now I didn't take any pictures of the shower stall, but this is directly across from that large beautiful window and the shower works perfectly. And I love that shower curtain that I found. A vintage inspired tea cart holds our towels and our soaps. And I found this pair of prints that are on burlap and it set the design for the entire bathroom. I like to think that the first picture with the two birds in the nest is representative of my husband and myself and the four little birds on a branch are for our four sons. We trimmed out our windows with fluted molding and little rosettes and I also have some decor on the walls again with the bird theme in the colors that we chose for this room. This bathroom is now warm and inviting and we're able to shower here in peace. Thank you for joining me here at Country Mama Musings. I hope you come back for chapter three.